Hello everyone and welcome! Let's be honest for a second, Riot has to be insane. They are releasing so many stories I simply can't cover them all. We are still missing the newly updated Zed and Shen, Karma got a story rework, Master Yi got an update, there is also the Syndra story, after that we got the Eye in the Abyss, and Nar 2. And now Riot released two new short stories for Nunu and Willem. And don't get me started on the High Noon lore. This is incredible. So please have patience as we slowly work through all the stories. Right now I want to stay near Freljord, so we can continue the previous storylines. Which means that before you watch this video I highly recommend going back to Lissandra and the base Nunu story. After those you'll know what's happening and everything will make sense. So without further ado, let's have a look at Nunu Scholar stories. Mom, can I ask you a question? What's wrong, Nunu? There's something crinkling your nose. I don't think the Elkir can be blamed. Well, this time. No offense, Kona. <clears throat> Elkir smell like doosicles, but we always make them pull our cards anyway. I don't wanna leave, Mom. I like that village. I found a warhorn in the mud. Then come close, my little grimacling. I will remind you. There is a reason the Notai must leave as the snow settle. An adventure that Winter's mother has entrusted to us. You mean Anivia? Mm-hmm. They say she's a phoenix, with icicles instead of feathers. Her wings worn on frigid wind. Brr. But we not I know it is hope that carries Anivia. And that she is not a guardian of our realm as the Avarosans say. She is freedom. She is the spirit that fills you as you follow your passion. No matter how mean the world is. Do you know what passion is, Nunu? Is it when the barbarian kisses the war mother? Hmm, sometimes. And sometimes the war mother kisses the barbarian. But if I had to name it, I would call passion... The feeling of one last celebration as winter hits. The warmth inside even better because the first snows are falling. The dancing, the singing, a lyre in my hands. Shivering even as I burn with this... This thing I try to name. This is what Anivia has tasked us with carrying across the Freljord. This is what gives her wind on her migration. Some villages see us as untrustworthy traders. Others fear us for the ice that announces our arrival. The winter that can mean life or death. But to them all, we bring song. We bring togetherness. We link each village with our spirit. Can you imagine what a gift this is, Nunu? To know what we know because caravan cards have rattled it into our bones. Life is an endless string of opportunity for songs. Like these? Yes, like my song strands. Each string is a song, each knot in the string is a note, and each note a place where we've been while following Anivia. Like this one. This is the droning murmur of pilgrims, gathered beneath the statue of Avarosa at the Recklestake, a frozen lake that glitters like a jewel too massive for anyone to own. But the Avarosans have built a monument beside it, and say they own it anyway. They live their lives as if they are statues. War mothers, iceborn, they do not move. They fear the world that exists outside of Avarosa's shadow. But to others, they have already moved too much. The Winter's Claw, they hate Avarosians. Avarosans, but the song binds them together, like this. This is the sound of chains tying wolf ships to Glacier Port and the Winter's Claw to the past. The old ways, blood in snow, they live their lives on shattered ice. They think it is their might that cracks a path to sea, the wolf ships prowling through. But it is not strong to cling to chains and to demand that others carry them as well. I remember the wolf ships, mom. They were made out of what, not wolves? The Winter's Claw don't know how to name things. Some things, Nunu, should not be named, like the Frostguard Citadel above the holding abyss. All those secrets, secrets of my own, of the warmth I have found. They preach there the words of the three sisters, but I think secrets are their true faith. How can you rescue someone from something they don't know, that only this howled dritch remembers, rising from the abyss? What the frost guard guard against? Are they heroes, like in the songs? I want to be a hero too. Listen to these notes, Nunu. They are the fortress at Frosthorn Peak and the crypts beneath. They are quiet, empty. Whatever the Iceborne fought against have been forgotten. And now, with nothing else to fight, they use their power to rule. Navarosans, Winter's Claw, Frostguard, 
they are the same. They use statues, chains, secrets to push men down onto their knees. But you, when I look out onto the road, I see your future, Nunu. The joy you would bring to so many, as you have brought to me. As Winter's mother wills it, and as she sends her winds to carry you, I will send love. You are my heart song, Nunu. What notes should we add next? Where should love take us? We're probably going to another village, but this one won't have war horns. No, Nunu. No, no. There is always more out there. You only need to imagine it. We could travel to a bridge that once spanned the sky, only it collapsed in a forgotten age, and most of it lies hidden beneath the clouds. But can you hear that? Someone is step, step, stepping along its edge. We could pass into the tombs of creatures who ruled the Freljor before humans. Find the mist that freezes in midair, giving ancient dreams shape. What is that in front of you, Nunu? Can you catch a dream on your tongue? Or find glacier tunnels that branch, as if tracing the shape of the world tree that our ancestors destroyed and buried in ice. All these things you can find if you look. You can go anywhere you can imagine. We could go to the top of the whole wide world, so I could play my warhorn? I bet then even Avarosa would hear it, and she'd come back. We could go there right now, Nunu, if you tell me all about it. What would you see? What is the story in your heart? I know how it starts. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Nunu and Laika, his mom. And she was beautiful. And they lived in a caravan and... They were trying to think of where to go next. And what did they decide, Nunu? They decided they could go anywhere together. And so their caravan flew into the sky when Kona grew wings out of her butt and flapped harder than Alivia. And the two of them were warm and safe, even though snow was falling. What's that feeling, mom? Like a hug, only... It's home. It's home, my little hero. And that is where we will always be, no matter where we go. This is how we know, though the cold comes with us. Though it can be hard to demand hope. It will never be winter, Nunu, if you love the person beside you. I wake up suddenly, like a story that starts in the middle of the action. The song, I heard it. Willem! I shout. I heard the song again, wake up! I shove aside the snow that serves as our blanket and look my flufferific friend in the face. His whiskers are twitching like they can feel my dream slowly fading. He growls and his breath swirls into all kinds of shapes. But even though he is old and has hair in his ear holes, still he's my best friend. I laugh as his beard tickles my nose. Nothing like a magical yeti to bring me back to reality. Willem rolls over and starts scratching his grumbling belly. You're always thinking about food. <coughs> I laugh again. Laughing feels good. It helps me remember. My mom. We've been following her song across the Freljord. My mom's heart song. Everywhere we've been, she made a verse. And if I could only remember what each place was, I could find my way back to her. I could save her, like a hero in her stories. But I can only remember parts of the song when I'm not trying. And sometimes it's like my mom is out there, singing. Like that, did you hear that? It's coming from that village. I below, pointing towards a patch of darkness beneath a frozen winterfall. Something inside me knows where the song came from. Sword first, Willem. I'll cut through the wind. I shiver as we enter the clearing a few moments later, though I'm surrounded by scrasly fur. Even this close, the village is mostly shadows. There are no people. If there were, I would know, cause it's so cold I'd see their breath. What is this place? I ask. Willem growls wisely. <laughs> Nalzig? That can't be its name. How would anyone know how to spell that? Then Willem grumbles that it's the Yeti word for stone. The buildings are stones heaped really high. The pathways are stones too. Stones. Got it. So, it's not weird that the flowers are carved out of stone, right? And those furs hanging over a door. And that old rope. At least it would be rope if it wasn't hard and grey. Is everything around here stones? I ask. It's not fair. In the story, stones at least have runes carved into them or something. I'm starting to wonder why the song let me hear. When finally, I see a person, their back turned beneath the arcway. My name is Nunu. I'm here to help. I yell and I pull the person's shoulder. But when they topple into the light with a dull twonk, 
I immediately realize. They're stone too. And beyond the arcway are all the missing people from the village, huddled together like statues. There's one who looks like a warrior, now dull and grey. There's a farmer and his wife, holding each other tightly, like they were carved from one slab. A little girl, a pebble beside them. It's a curse. A real one. Willem, I say. We gotta do something. That's the thing about mom's songs. My favorites were always tales of heroes. More than a match for any curse. With the lessons I learned, we can save these people, right? I have to believe. Otherwise, how am I gonna save her? I remember one song. A myth about how Avarosa healed the turtle that carried the sea. By giving it a big kiss. But I don't want my first kiss to be a statue. I make Willem kiss him just in case. <laughs> and watch the stone get stuck to his fur. I try saying the prayers Lissandra taught me, just in case. I make a dragon out of snow to scare the curse away, like Anivia did to fight the southern army. I even try pulling the sun closer, like how Brom throughout his village in the song my mom sang. But the sun's too far. Brom must have really long arms. Willem tries to confront me. He says some curses can't be fought. Sometimes heroes don't win. But I remember what matters. I can feel it, even though my mom is missing. Our caravan buried in snow. The feeling of being loved. That's what this village deserves. If we can't help these people, I tell Willem, then we're gonna help these statues. I smile and reach for my flute. I mean, my sword. Swell songer. Hero time! <laughs> I can smell the curse. A hateful stench like a troll. It has the weight of centuries. Weights that could grind the years this child has left down to mere days. Here is where even heroes of song would question how they could fight. Blades powerless against ancient magic. But Nunu is no mere hero. He is something better. He's a boy. He whoops and calls my attention to frozen waterfall above us. We are close enough now that we can see them. Nestled atop stillness. Crugs. Stone creatures animated by magic. More than at home living above the village such as this one. Their nests have dammed the water's flow. Holding back the Freljord's lifeblood. I taste a hint of Nuru's intentions. It tastes like rugs. Delicious. Hey, stony crabs! You took something from these statues! Nunu yells and hops onto my back without losing a beat. For the music in his heart. The magic is his now. Swept up in his imagination, snow forms before us. Gradually taking shape into a mighty snowball. I laugh as we rumble wildly. Our merry burden growing so large that beneath us the village trembles. Buildings stretching themselves awake. And still the snowball grows larger. The cracks make only a tiny chitter as we leap into the air and on top of the waterfall, blotting out the sun. The Freljord goes white. The dam embraced by snow even as it's torn apart. And then the earth roars. Icicles crack like bones made brittle by water. The roar grows louder as the river coughs and clears dust from its throat. Water tumbling into the village below. Did you see that, Willem? Nunu asks, but my eyes are already closed. I can feel a magic more powerful than the curse welling up to fill the village. Casting shivers through my fur and bringing warmth to a world that is cold. This is the only magic that can save Freljord. Even the frozen dreams of my people, coveted by the Frostguard, pale in comparison to this magic, held in abundance by a child. Hope. His arms are around me, and I hug him back with all four limbs, looking away so he doesn't see the snowflakes falling from my eyes. The curse has not lifted, but still, life has returned, and as it spreads, stone flowers washing away to make room for living ones. What curse could stand in its way? No evil can last if life embraces joy and refuses to hide. I reach onto the ground and pick up a chunk of ice, rushing into snow between my paws. Hey! Nunu yells as I hit him in the face with a snowball, trailing the magic that swirls in his heart. As we play, the wind whips through the flute on Nunu's back, casting up stray notes. Then I finally hear it too, her song. Where waters once roared, winds whisper to stone, in shadow Nalgic lies, silence sinks, hope survives.
And that was the story of Nunu and Willem. These two stories revealed a lot about the culture of Freljord. Nunu's mom talked about the other tribes in the first story. All of them seem to gain control over Freljord through different means, be it with knowledge and secrets or with raw power. But the key part is that all of them want to conquer the land. Nunu's tribe, the Notai, are people that are all about freedom. They constantly move and follow winter, because they believe it is Anivia spreading snow and ice around Freljord. Another reason why they follow this winter caused by Anivia is because they also spread songs and fellowship by traveling, which is something that the faith in Anivia is all about. Here we also learn that Anivia is still somewhat of a myth. I thought that the Notai were in contact with her, but it seems they only know stories. People strongly believe in her and sing songs about her, but I couldn't find a proof that they would actually meet her. If you read the base story, you knew that Nunu's mom disappeared when the children were taken into the Frostguard Citadel. So at this point the big mystery is what happened to her and what role will she play in the future. Another interesting bit was the scene where Nunu's mother dabbled in all of Nunu's possible adventures. It is interesting because she was actually talking about things that do exist, even though she was describing fictional stories. So maybe she knows about them from ancient songs. I'll show you what I mean by this. She talked about a bridge that spanned the sky, but then it collapsed and now it is hidden in the clouds. That would be Targon. The real Targon city can only be found in the clouds, and the mountain kind of serves as a portal to the heavens. In other words, a bridge. Then she mentions tombs full of ancient creatures that ruled Freljord before humans. This could either be the yetis, trolls or even the watchers. The mist that freezes and gives shapes to dreams would be Willem. Of course at that time Nunu didn't meet him yet. She even mentions a world tree that was destroyed by their ancestors. This reminded me of Ivern, but in his story the god Willow was in Ionia. Even though Ivern himself was from Freljord, but she never mentioned where the world tree was. So it is possible that Ivern would be the ancestor who destroyed the world tree. When she mentions these imaginary stories, she is very convincing and they are far too close to the real events. So I wonder if she knows more than meets the eye. After all, why would she be missing now? Maybe she is trying to learn Nunu into a place that would reveal more. But that is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to rate it and subscribe for more lore and news. Our social media, Twitch merch and PO box will be in the description. Of course, massive shout out to our patrons for going the extra mile. You guys are amazing. And with that, thank you all so much for being here and for your support. You know, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you, come again.